Now, I've got John who asks, uh, would it be to my advantage to put my super into gold for the next four to six years? Um, there's been a lot of uh, hype and a lot of question about uh, gold. Uh, I guess it continues to go up as uh, people uh, move to gold um, as a hedge against uh, currency devaluation. And whenever there are uh, negative periods, uh, gold is seen as the place to move your money to. And uh, because of that, we're seeing gold prices uh, go through the roof. Uh, uh, traditionally, or originally, a lot of currencies um, uh, were linked to gold. So um, there was a gold standard. So that if you had, if the uh, government issued a certain amount of money, then that had to be backed by a certain amount of gold. And and a lot of companies like the US and Australia don't have that anymore. But because of that history, uh, uh, gold has uh, has been a um, has continued to be seen as a place to store. Um, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, store money in negative uh, in negative markets. Uh, if you want to hear Shane uh, Oliver, the uh, well, Dr. Shane Oliver, the chief economist of AMP, address this particular question, it is on a podcast that I have. Um, so on my website, if you search for podcast number twenty three, I think it is, which is the question and answer session after um, Shane Oliver's. Uh, commentary about what's happening and making sense of the the current um, volatility in the market. Uh, so there's two two podcasts in the series. The number twenty two is the actual presentation, uh, and there's also a link to the presentation that he talked about, uh, and it's talking about all these things. And one of the questions was was gold, and he said there is a place for some gold, but I wouldn't be moving all of my assets over into that single asset class. That's the whole approach of diversification that we talked through before. Um, and the other concerns I have about gold is that it, it doesn't actually generate any income, uh, and it's very much a speculative asset. The only reason why it's going up at the moment is because everyone's putting their money into it. It's not actually doesn't derive any dividends. There's no payments from it. it actually, costs you to hold the gold. Uh, so. Uh, I would prefer to see the money in a gold company uh, who's actually generating the gold, uh, sorry, uh, pulling the gold out of the ground and uh, it pays out dividends. Uh, And some of the companies actually, interestingly, are are paying out dividends uh, based on the gold price. So they're getting a little bit creative about how they're they're paying out dividends. So it's kind of a mix between holding a gold versus holding gold. Uh, a uh, producer or a, or a gold mining company, they're trying to create a structure where it's somewhere in between. Uh, you're holding the company, but it's paying it out based on the gold price, paying out dividends based on the gold price. But uh, generally, it's it's a high-risk approach to put all of your assets into a single asset class, in particular gold that doesn't generate uh, dividends at all. Uh, as I think uh, Shane Oliver talks about in that podcast, uh, that there is a place for a portion of your money in gold, but uh, it's not a significant portion of your money. And, uh, you know, even over the four to six years, it's a long-term time frame being it to be in a single asset class. If you look back on history, even though we've seen really, you know, the gold price uh, go up significantly in the last little while, if you look back on history, uh, even I think the Australian share market, if you compare the return on it as it compared to gold, uh, the share market, the Australian share market's provided a better return, and even if you don't include dividends. So, um, you know, you really got to look about look at the long term returns of markets as well, and not just get caught up in the uh, the hype of a, a particular asset. Uh, and people are talk, talking about it in terms of an asset bubble at the moment as well. So, uh, gold does seem to be in that bubble sort of stage, and and that you know, are you buying in at a high? Um, if you were going to buy into it, I wouldn't be looking at four to six years. I'd be looking at a shorter term time frame, and then it becomes more of a gamble than a than a uh, you know a solid investment. Mm-hmm.